around working, going to school full time, and want or need to have a social life, I know I did, then stay tuned because this is all about how to do all of those things and be successful in school. So really quickly, just a background on me. I graduated four years ago from Texas State University with a bachelor's in exercise and sports science. I am currently in a second bachelor's program for speech therapy. I can go into another video about that journey, but that would take forever to explain. So um, I did get a 3.5, I believe, in my first degree. And last semester was my first semester in this speech therapy degree, and I did get all A's. So I just wanted to give you a quick background before we got started so that you can kind of know where I'm at in my college journey. The first thing that I suggest to do is save up some days if you are working. Save up some sick days, some PTOs, because I took about three days off this past semester as well as a couple half days and that helped me tremendously to get the grades that I got excuse me, if you have a job that's not going to allow you to take days off throughout the semester here and there, I would highly suggest to look for a job that is more flexible or to um, cut back on your school hours, whatever you need to do. I just know that for me personally, I have to have time to study. I can't just go to class, read my notes once or twice through and be good. That doesn't work for me. So I know that I need more time. So the second thing that I advise you to do is get a space. A workspace is so important. I can't tell you how many times I tried to sit down on my bed or the couch and do school. It just did not work for me. It's too comfy. That's where I'm in chill mode, relaxation, Netflix mode. It didn't work for me personally. So create a workspace with a flat surface, a good chair that has good lumbar support. Even if you have to create a little corner in your room, do it. Um, get a little pull-up table that um, you can put contact paper over it to make it look cuter, get a Goodwill lamp, and you're good to go. So just create a good workspace. Okay, the next thing you should do is, or could do, you don't have to do this, but this helps me um, occasionally, is get yourself a little vision board. So I actually have one on my digital planner and you can also just get a little poster board and a small one, doesn't be real big, and cut out magazine pictures. Get a vision board that has dreams, goals, future, extraordinary dreams, how, what, however you wanna structure it, just to pull up every time you sit down and need to work and just aren't feeling that motivated. Um, it has helped me. It just kind of kickstarts and reminds myself why I am doing this. Okay, so the next thing that I cannot stress enough is to get yourself a planner. The planner it is a lifesaver. It literally tells you what you need to do and by when you need to do it. Don't over by not turning something in. That is, that's just the worst. Um, so this is the planner that I use. It's just a digital planner and I love it. I absolutely love it. I got an iPad during, uh, da, 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 what is that called, Black Friday? I got the iPad during Black Friday, asked for the Apple Pencil for Christmas. I was blessed and got both. And you don't need a digital plan and you can print it out. There's a lot of free resources as well. Um, your school has planners, I'm sure, that they give out usually. Just find what works for you and stick to it and make, your, make sure that you look at it daily. So here I've got a weekly planner page that I, I can't say I fully created it because I just tweaked it a lot from um, one of Hustle Sainley's slash Jess Massey's pages that I purchased from her, but I did tweak it a lot. So, I mean, I really don't know. I'll show you this one page. So here's the first page. This is what sits on the left side. I've got Monday here. This is my... Art 
articulation phonological disorders class, my language disorders class, audiology, and speech hearing science. So this is just so that whenever I sit down to do school, I know exactly what I'm doing that day for what class. I'm not sitting there for 30 minutes trying to figure out um, what I am doing for that day. And I try to get to at least two classes, if not all four. I try to chunk different times of the afternoon to dedicate to each class. I set a timer. Once that timer is up, I really try to follow it and move on to the next thing. Um, you don't want to focus too much time on one class because that is how you get behind. This is just an example of how you can set up a um, planner, an academic planner. It has a monthly planner in there as well, so you can actually see what big plans you've got as far as maybe like your social life. And then I would also put my big exams or projects on my monthly planner. That way I know which weekends I can have a little bit more fun, which weekends I need to knuckle down a little bit more, things like that. So biggest thing, get a planner. Okay, so another thing to go along with the planner is time management and prioritization. Obviously, work and school need to come first, but you need to schedule in time to relax, have fun, spend time with your loved ones. It's so important to not be so hyper-focused on one, those one or two things. That's the only way I survived this last semester was by making sure I was scheduling in plenty of having fun time. So for example, on the weekends, the weekends are my biggest school working productivity time. So Friday night, I would come home from work, do a workout, shower real quick, take a power nap, and then I would do school for about two, maybe three hours. But usually on Fridays, I take it a little bit easier. Stop around nine or 10, just depending on the day. And I just Netflix, just watch Netflix, have a glass of wine or white claws, maybe more than one, whatever you wanna do. On Saturday, I would try to wake up at a decent time, maybe like 10, so not as early as for work, but still at a decent time. And then I would do school from about 10 or 11 to four or five in the afternoon. That's a long day to be doing school, but that's just really what, really what helps me. Then by Saturday evening, I'm ready to go out, put some makeup on, go out to dinner. Um, we actually didn't do that a whole lot this past semester because of COVID, <clears throat> which actually kind of helped me though. And then we would also go to our friend's house and we would have fun and go drink over there. That was my time to really relax and have fun because I knew that whole day I had just spent doing schoolwork. So I was productive and I earned that relaxation time. Work first, play later. Okay, the fifth thing is purchasing apps. I knew I was going to be purchasing a lot of apps for the semester, so what I did was I, and I actually found a promo going on through app, through the app store, and it was like, buy a certain amount of credit and you were gonna get $10 credit. So I got like 80 or $90 worth and then I got like $20 credit free. And that was before the fall semester, so maybe that's why they knew people were gonna be buying a bunch of apps. Okay, so the next thing that I wanted to talk about is the app that I use. So I actually use the OneNote app by Microsoft. That is basically my school binder. So it has tabs for you to put your classes and then it has pages within that to make certain sections of that tab. Um, and then overall, you can have different notebooks. So I have a Spring 21 notebook and that has all my classes in it. Um, huge advocate of that. I put everything in there. I put my syllabus, my assignment tracker, then I've got all of my PowerPoint notes and you can write on top of the PowerPoint notes. You can write next to it. You can type on it, type next to it. It is a great app to use and it should be free through your university. I know that we have it through our portal. So check with your school and see if you've got that offer. I actually have a, another video 
about how I set up my OneNote for the semester. And then I'm going to be making another one on how I actually do school with the OneNote app, like how I attend class, how I take the notes, how I study, how I recreate notes as a review, just different things like that. That really, really helped me. And then, but if you're a paper and pen type of, type of person, that's how you work, that's awesome. So make sure that you're printing out your notes ahead of time. So make sure that you get your books early and on time. You don't want to set yourself up for starting off behind just because you don't have your textbooks in time. I'm a big advocate for ebooks. Like I said earlier about the planner and the OneNote is that it's always with you. You don't have to worry about taking it to different places and forgetting it at home or deciding not to bring it and then realizing you needed it, it's always with you. So I actually have a spreadsheet that I made and I just keep recycling and reusing throughout the semesters. And it has the title of the book, the class it's for, the ISBN number, the author, and if the access code is required or not. And then I've got another column that has all the different places I can get the book from. So like Chegg, the publisher, um, I think it's called eCampus, uh, Half Price Books. The Half Price Books though is the physical textbooks, but I still don't wanna knock them out of the running in case they've got a great price. <sighs> Google Play Store, I actually bought one of my books this semester from there because if they had the cheapest ebook in for that particular book. Cause you don't wanna be spending more than you have to if there's somewhere you can get it cheaper. And I usually rent my ebooks. Okay, so the next thing is working out. So I made it a huge priority to make sure that I am still getting in my workouts. I am not the fittest person in the world, but I am really, really trying to stay active and keep my workouts going. I think I've been working out consistently since about 2018. I, what I would do is work out, I would try to work out at least three to five times a week Last semester, I was averaging about four times a week because there are days that I just couldn't. I Either I was super sore or I just did not have the time um, or I had to do something else. On those days that I couldn't work out, I would either make that my rest day and I would only try to have one or two rest days uh, or I would do a HIIT workout. A HIIT workout can range from... I mean, there's a ton of different HIIT workouts you can do, but mine usually range from 15 to 25 minutes. Uh, usually I try to do a 15 or 20 minute workout. It's a high intensity, I'm still hitting my calories, and it's performed in a much smaller amount of time. I can get in and get out. If working out is important to you, you have to keep it a priority and schedule it into your day. So like I said, I would change in my workout clothes at work that way as soon as I get home I'm ready to go I work out from home if you have a busy lifestyle where you're going to school full-time and working full-time I highly suggest to start working out from home which I feel like that's a lot of our only options right now with COVID but a uh, huge advocate for working out at home there's a ton of YouTube videos Instagram videos there's the Nike training app there are so many free resources out there to get yourself working out Okay, the next thing is power naps. Keyword being power. I am a huge fan of power naps. So I can't tell you how many times I've tried to sit down and do school after working all day and then working out. And then once I start, once I sit down and get 15 minutes into school, I'm like dozing off. So when that happens, I just don't try to fight it. I turn everything off. I close my blinds. I lay on this bed pull out a pillow and pull out this blanket. I don't get into the blankets, that's too comfy. And then I set my timer for, or my alarm for about 20 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes at the most. And I take my watch off so I don't get notifications during that precious 20 minute time. And I go to sleep. When the alarm goes off, you have to get up because then it's not a power nap anymore. So I actually read some uh, sites and blogs and things. I was reading was that 15 to 20 minutes is the best time frame to nap. It, I guess it doesn't allow your body to go into a full deep sleep, but it's enough to rest your body. 
Also another quick thing that I was reading was drink a little bit of caffeine before your power nap. That way when your power nap is over, the caffeine should be kicking in. So just a quick little tip on how to power nap. So the last thing is if your job allows it, do some school at work. Um, if you have a desk job, this is probably easier than some other jobs. For example, um, during my lunch break, instead of sitting and talking with your coworker, do some school. Pull out your notes, put your, your earbuds in, and read a chapter while you're eating, watch a lecture, do whatever you need to do. Because 30 minutes, you can get a lot done in 30 minutes if it's dedicated 30 minutes. Sometimes when my kids are having a snack, uh, I have a snack and then I pull out my digital flashcards. Just little, little pieces of the day that you can do that, um, try to do it, but only if your job allows it. Okay, so I believe that's everything. I really, really hope this helps you and uh, I hope it wasn't too long. I just wanted to be thorough and make sure that I explained why I do things and how I do it. I did get all A's last semester, so these things really, really did help me. So good luck in your semester. And if you have any comments, questions, or advice for me, please let me know. And I hope you have a great semester. Bye.